Hey guys, glad to have you watching. In this video, I will be showing you my beautiful two year old Campanardus Coronatatus colony. The colony is housed in a tubs and tube setup. This means an outworld with one or several test tubes. They have three test tubes available in the setup right now. And of course, the queen is always in the test tube, which looks the worst. The queen is located in test tube number 1, which is run completely dry. A part of the colony is housed in number 2, which is also running dry. And I'm hoping they will start moving to the new glass test tube soon, which is number 3. Normally, a small water fountain would suffice, but this colony drinks a lot, so I made sure I gave them a bird feeder. For a 2 year old colony, this colony isn't big at all. The colony went through two hibernations and could have grown a lot bigger. But I had a lot of problems from the beginning with the queen. The queen would keep on eating her own brood. By that time the end room was somewhere else. A place with a lot more vibrations so it kinda makes sense. And when the first nanitic finally arrived, she killed it. I've heard more stories about people with Kruntatus queens and more people experiencing difficulties with the founding stages. I'm really glad I pushed through. After killing a nanitic, I put the queen away for several weeks in the dark. And with success, the queen turned into a beautiful colony. The ants are large and they have stunning majors with beautiful colors. I really love the matte black and orange. They can be aggressive when they need to be, but they rather play it safe and stay together as a group, close to the brood and close to the queen. They got out of hibernation a little too soon since we had an increase in temperature, but the colony has a nice and healthy amount of brood, and this year they will be growing a lot. I'm going to keep giving them test tubes if they require more space, until the colony is big enough for a white tongue nest from Antheap. And if they reach that size, I will make an update. The colony reached to the size where growing in numbers should go a lot faster now. So I'm pretty curious if we can pull it off this summer. And I think giving them a medium nest right now will be a waste of money. And cost us more stress than necessary. So why not add test tubes until they are big enough for a decent nest. Their nesting area is around 24 degrees and the outworld is between 22 and 24 degrees. When it comes to food, the ants are not picky at all. They eat everything I offer them. They're a little bit shy and careful when it comes to approaching the food. Usually, they walk around in circles, and every now and then there's this brief moment of physical contact but it can take quite some time before the ants make contact and feast. And if I see the meeting, it's very late at night. I tried staying up, but I was way too exhausted. So I thought I'd try again with a cricket the next time. And as you can see, a lot of walking around is involved. Until one of the workers noticed that the cricket was still moving a little bit. So she started the attack. It didn't take long to discover that the head was cut off and that the cricket was an easy meal. So the feasting can begin. With a lot of my other colonies, I usually see that one of the workers gets a quick taste and then heads to the nest to inform the others. And then heads straight back with a lot of workers with her. But this colony usually has two or three workers at the meal at the same time. I'm not sure if they do this because the colony is still not that big, but it's pretty cool to see the same workers going up and down to the meal and perform trophallaxis when they reach their nest. And once the trophallaxis is done, they head straight back to the meal. I have made some really nice shots of them sharing food, which I will be showing at the end of the video. Trophallaxis is very common to witness and you see it happening a lot in a lot of the colonies, so technically it's not that special, but I think it's very satisfying to see, especially with a decent camera. I wish I could tell you some additional information, 
I would like to read about ants, but I'm still looking for a basic book that's easy to read. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. The colony's main protein source is frozen dubia roach that comes straight from the freezer. Like I said, they're not that picky. Some of my other colonies eat cricket and worm, so the Cruntatus get some of those as well, occasionally. And I can speak for the ants, but I guess the dubia roaches are their favorite. With worms I always have some leftovers, and the dubias are completely clean when I remove them. Their main source of sugar is beetle jelly. This is cheap and easy to give to all of my colonies. Every now and then the ants receive some sunburst ant nectar as well. And they have a sugar cube in the outworld. Every now and then I put a drop of water on it and they'll know instantly and start working the cube. And yes, my colonies are pretty spoiled. I have a nice time lapse of their physogastrism if you are interested. I love watching the ants get bigger and bigger. I hope that this colony is the proof that sometimes you just need to keep on trying. The queen had a really rough start and everybody thought it was a waste of time. But look at the healthy and beautiful colony. Trying to save her sister, since she is still stuck coming out from the cocoon. And if she can make it for herself, she makes sure to drag her back to her sisters, so they all can assist on getting her out. And as tough as the leftovers can be, I think the ant made it out. I can't find a corpse of her anywhere. And I can find a worker with some cocoon leftovers as well. But not every ant is that fortunate. This worker, which is laying on the edge of the setup is dying. And even now, every now and then a worker comes by to check on her. And even feed her. But it didn't take long for the end to stop moving and finally die. Luckily, besides a generation every now and then, nothing silly is happening with this colony. I'm glad they are finally stable after such a difficult founding stage. I'd like to end the video with something positive instead of an end dying. So I got some beautiful shots and time lapses coming up. It's worth the wait. And for the new watchers, I truly hope you enjoyed watching my content and my beautiful colony. And if you did, it would mean the world to me if you would like, comment and of course subscribe. Thanks for watching, enjoy the upcoming footage and I'm hoping to see you all in the next video. Bye bye!